today we're going to have a look at uh, this guy, um, Morg Official. Um, I've seen this guy quite a few times on YouTube and Facebook. So you might think this is a little bit of a weird choice for a serious quantum group such as ours. Um, we are not serious. We are not actually, <laughs> we're not, we're not actually serious, yeah. But um, actually, uh, despite what this guy looks like, you know, he does videos like, you know, taking the Christ out of Christmas and, uh, <laughs> and satanic prayer for Christians and things wow. like this. Despite these kinds of things, he occasionally comes up with some uh, science-y kind of videos. Okay, so the, clearly all these are really uh, all this kind of spiritual kind of stuff. Yeah, but uh, here's a video that came out uh, at least uh, well, not so recent, at least uh, this year, and for five reality glitches to prove you are eternal. Um, so we're just going to have a look at this and see whether the science holds up. So, okay, so let's mm. have a look. Okay. Here's a lot of people saying that reality isn't physical, but instead is based on a code. But if that's true, how come there aren't any glitches? How come we don't hit the... So the premise is glitches in reality. Mm -hmm. I think I'm having a glitch in reality <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, I'm going to show you right now that there are glitches all around you. You just haven't noticed. We're going to look at five glitches in reality and then show how they prove that you are eternal, the death. How strange that is, there is a maximum speed in reality. Once you hit the speed line, which is roughly... But, it, might, it might change. But this is legit, right? Yeah. I've speed always actually had a legitimate question about like the speed of the implications of. Well, I'm sure in QFT this is probably covered. But like, what? if you are uncertain, like energy uncertainty, if you're close to the speed of light, mm -hmm. if it's possible for your like distribution, your uncertainty distribution of your velocity to be under the speed of light. Ah, okay. You know, so like if you're traveling if we've by got, the edge of a light cone. Okay, okay. We've got time, energy, uncertainty. Yeah. Or, just, or you could imagine like yeah. a, like a particle traveling along the edge of a light cone. Right. Its position uncertainty would be like, could you have you want to draw position it? uncertainty outside of the light cone? Uh, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. So I, I assume I that you can't in some way mm -hmm. that, that, that that's shown. But mm -hmm. I just, I, I, I think don't. Dowling had a, had a paper on uncertainty relations, and uh, and, and you know relativistic effects. So um, um, we I'm might refer sure. to John Dowling's paper. Link in the. This was a point in the like part of the video. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The oh, link oh, was there. Here. There, yeah. there. There. No, it captions down. Wait, right? here. It should be here. <laughs> All right, anyway. Let, let, keep I don't going. want to derail us too, too much. 300,000 kilometers a second. You can't go Whoa. any faster. That's it. That is the cosmic speed limit. This is completely counterintuitive to how we normally conceptualize speed. People tend to just pass over these things without really thinking about how crazy they are. I mean, really think about it. There is a cosmic speed limit. There's a certain speed that you just can't go faster. The speed of light is at 300,000 kilometers per second, no matter what. If you're standing still and you turn on a flashlight, that light will travel at 300,000 kilometers per second. If you're on a rocket ship traveling at incredibly fast speed and you turn on a light, the light will still be traveling at 300,000 kilometers per second. You cannot go faster than the speed of light, no matter what. You hit a wall. Okay, hit the wall. Okay. So, I think that's all legit. I think everything he says is pretty accurate. Uh, spaceship yes, does accurate. No obvious mistake. No obvious mistakes. Yeah. So, mm. so. What? He looks scary right now. Can we? <laughs> <laughs> he's he's always looking scary. But but yeah, we cannot be deceived by uh. his uh, appearance. Uh, I, I say check. Check. Tick. Yeah.
Now let's look at the next glitch in reality. Mm -hmm. Particle duality shows that everything in existence exhibits wave behavior. That means that everything, even matter, behaves like a wave. Again, this is completely counterintuitive to how you perceive reality. You typically think of things as being solid and inert, but no, everything is wave-like. Everything is that the thing we do every day? Yes, this is this is the thing that we are always okay. doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You remember? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I would just say check. Okay? Yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah. I, again, yeah. it's like it's actually true. totally legit. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I kind of suspect that this guy is actually like a physicist. Like he's probably done a degree mm. of physics somewhere because like all the details are actually all right. So like the yeah. Satanic University yeah. Department of Physics. <laughs> especially, <hell>. yeah, especially <laughs> that part, yeah. <laughs> is in motion and in flux. Next is the law of conservation of what was that last part? This shows that energy can never be flux? created or destroyed. Okay. Only transformed. This is important because Everything ultimately at the fundamental level is energy. This means that nothing can ever be truly created or destroyed, only transformed into other forms. Everything is eternal. It's a claim about like everything is fundamentally energy that doesn't really, it, like energy is like a property that <laughs> well, people possess. Yeah, I, well, he's quoting but, Einstein yeah. basically that, uh, Okay, so you convert mass into energy. Yeah, if you eat more than mass matters, then mm, yeah, that's right. Basically. And then, uh, well, light is, well, well, has it energy. Yeah, it's like it, yeah. energy is a property of the you okay. Know, of the mm. that, that's that's easy model. to prove. If you just take a chocolate bar, chocolate bar is matter, but it has kilocalorie values in yes. it, so it gives you energy. Yeah. So I would say check. <laughs> <laughs> At its most pure state is light. This is going to be or very fat. important to remember in a moment. Next up is quantum entanglement. And oh, this is what we do. This is what we're doing, right? Yeah. Also what we're doing, yeah. Two particles that are entangled, a change in one particle will instantly affect the other no matter the distance. Now, why is this important? Yeah, so this instantaneous thing is also, uh, it's it's correct in a, yeah. in a sense. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think the point is that it's like random. So it's a, it's a random instantaneous uh, effect on another particle. And that's what makes it a bit subtle. Yeah. Mm. Any other comments? So far, I agree. So far, it's perfect. Yeah. yeah. And and that you have to have the two particles. They need to be local first to become entangled. Uh, no. No. Uh, not really. Well, they have to, yeah, they have to share some interaction. They have to share yeah, something. Yeah. It has to. Uh, yeah. Something like should mediate it at yeah. least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, remember, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. That means that these particles can't be sending a signal to each other because if the signal were sent between them, time would be required to pass as the signal travels. Time would be, has to be okay. Is that an obvious statement? It slightly confused me in the explanation, but is he saying something obvious there? I, I think he's talking about delay. Yeah. Yeah, and I think in case of quantum entanglement, there's no delay. For the effect. I think he's just, curve. yeah, he's just restating yeah. that. He's yeah. just emphasizing yeah. that. Yeah. But there is no time interval. The particles communicate. No, wait, wait, wait. Communicate? Ooh. 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 No, no, no. Ooh. So it's basically yeah. carries the information. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's no information. Exchange. Yeah, there's no actual information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The outcome will be random. So It's random, yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's yeah. no information. So but I think he's still saying that there's an effect. Yeah, I, yeah. Spooky I key action at a distance. I think what he means is that, but what, if you just yeah evaluate exactly word by word, yes. it's not entirely. That's true. right. Yeah, and it's just so, not so accurate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Point one marks off. So I I just put this yeah. thing, but it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of satanic symbol. <laughs> Continuous communication happening between the particles. This shows that reality is non-local, which means distance 
is an illusion. Now you might be thinking, distance is an illusion. The illusion, yeah. Mm. I mean, like a non-local object doesn't imply that distance still isn't real. Mm. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I mean, distance is distance. Yeah, distance is there. Yeah, yeah. But here, but it's, it's, it's you still have a metric. Uh, yeah, this, yeah. This it's definitely non-local. This is um, mm. a lot of what a lot of people talk about. Yeah. I mean, what does this have to do with anything? Just stick with me. This all fits together, and I'm going to show you how. Next up are singularities. Now, singularities exist at the very center of black holes. A singularity is a point which contains an unfathomably huge mass in an infinitesimal point. All physical laws seemingly break down at this moment, and they are the ultimate glitch. But singularities don't only exist at the center of black holes. Can you pause for a second? Uh, why can you? Why can we call it a glitch? I mean, just the fact that our theories are not developed enough to describe it mm. doesn't yeah. mean this is a glitch. Yeah. Mm. A glitch sort of implies that, like, it's supposed to be something else. Yeah, which like, implies that it's yeah. supposed to be yeah. this, like, like you understand this something thing. and it yeah. just works differently. Yeah, yeah you but here we don't understand. It's just sort of interesting things. Yeah, about the universe. Mm. Right. But maybe what he's getting at is <laughs> I'm gonna be, be defending. <laughs> okay, okay. But I mean, okay, if you look at space time mm -hmm. and then it's sort of somehow if it's a, a you know, a singularity, then it's mm -hmm. sort of breaking the space time. Yes. So uh in that sense it's sort of discontinuous in some way. Maybe he's implying in that way yeah but he also yeah. said before that everything is wave at the same time so how is singularity a wave nobody has quantized gravity. yeah well yeah. tying all these things together is mm. is, is difficult of course mm. yeah is are all the laws of physics uh do they all break down in a black hole what are the is it entropy angular momentum and mass are the only three properties that mm. black holes have right so so what? It all breaks down. And so all of the entropy is yeah. contained in the surface. Because you have infinite so. densities. Mm. Mm. But do they break down? Like, what? we can't say anything about Well, I, I think those yeah. are the few, few things you could say that don't break down. Right, I see. Like I see it I makes see. sense mm -hmm. to still use angular yes. momentum. Those properties still. Yeah. Singularity. Scientific materialism says that everything, all of existence, originated at a singularity. It's everything came forth from that singularity that was the beginning of the space-time existence. It is founded on a singularity, which means that in the eyes of physics, the Big Bang, the beginning of everything, according to them, is founded on a mystery. Really, stop and think about how it... Well, yeah, most yeah. of it seems yeah. legit, yeah. So yeah. I, I think I will give him a yes. Yes, yes. Okay. give him a tick. Yeah. We can answer them simply. They are only unanswerable if you have a failed paradigm. But our paradigm explains it elegantly. We're going to show right now that these glitches, these paradoxes, are only strange when you view reality as being material and being physical. And once you realize that it is not physical, it all clears up, fits together, and forms a beautiful picture, and most importantly shows that you, we, all of us, are eternal. Uh, mm, I, I think the physics part has ended. <laughs> now, now is the metaphysics part. Okay, all right, uh, okay. Well, okay. Well, let's, Some mysterious see, part is coming. Let's see if we can title. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. First thing that you have to understand. Maybe we'll find a point of gravity. Yeah. A simulation, like a video game. It's not something that aliens programmed or something like that. This is a mathematical reality. It's a so, reality of no reptilians. <laughs> green, but it's all based on mathematical yeah. patterns. Now, this mathematical coding is why reality can seem like a simulation, because mathematics is really code-like. It follows structured rules, just like a code. So, so what, everything is a simulation? This I, is, I thought the, the video is saying things aren't a simulation? Oh, things are not a simulation. 
Yeah. I'm not sure, but I think I agree with him in a way that the laws of logic and mathematics are above the laws of physics. Is like, that, yeah, is that Platonism? What are the three like main philosophies of mathematics? There's the one that's like Platonism, where it's like you, the idea. You mean the Euclidean one? So like you mean the Euclidean one, where with else? Well, I'm, I'm not sure, but you can imagine a universe with different laws of physics, with different chemistry, and yes. But can you imagine a universe with different laws of logic? If you're no, taking no. mathematics as a logic, basic logic system, then be yeah. because there could be no laws of physics without laws of logic, right? They mm -hmm. have to obey the laws of logic, but there could be different laws of physics. So I think. I agree with him in this sense that... What do you mean by laws of logic that, I mean, like you just, you have some you know, rules and then you yeah, like have some outcomes, Yeah, like the Morgan right? laws, you know, predicates, logical predicates, those kind okay. of things. Right, because the, lo like those transformations are the transformations that preserve like a binary truth property. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. You know, there, there has to be truth. But you can have an alternative, and, there are like alternate logic structures. Is there? Is that right? Yeah. Isn't it, there like, um, isn't Bayesian logic like infinite basis? Mm. Where you, instead of like a binary truth, you're describing like the preservation of your confidence about an outcome. Mm. So, so from what I know, you have different descriptions of the same logic. Yeah. Like, like you can describe logic using uh, lambda calculus. Mm -hmm. or uh, Boolean predicates, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Et but I think the logic behind it is the same. It's just yeah. It's different. Yeah. But the, the, it, it alters, like, it might alter the like hierarchy of whether you put yeah. logic above. Because if, if it was the Bayesian style, like the, then it's the confidence of the observer. Mm. And that would, I don't know, maybe equate. Well, it would pot potentially put the physical higher than the... Mm, I'm not. Sh I'm not sure about that. But yeah, I don't know enough about <coughs> philosophy and math. So yeah, if you're talking about logic, that's more like a philosophical question. Maybe not like a, maybe people can write what they think in the comments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep this in mind: the reality is a mathematical reality of mind, and we're going to put this all together now to see how this all links up. Because these glitches, so to speak, aren't actually glitches or errors. They're only glitches and errors when you view reality as material. But when you realize that reality isn't material, that it isn't physical, but is actually a mental existence based on a mathematical code, all of this comes together and makes perfect sense. Okay. So it's yeah, now yeah, about I'm to ready, I'm ready to. Have yes, it all we're ready to. Yeah. yeah. Have our mind blown, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He said it's based on Mathematica code. Mathematica? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Mathematica. <laughs> Everything right now. So let's take a look at one of the biggest glitches, the singularity, and put everything together and see what it says about existence. The Big Bang states that everything, all of space-time, came from the singularity, a single infinitesimal point at the beginning of time. However, this is a clear violation of the law of conservation of energy, which says that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, only transformed. If all of existence suddenly sprang from absolutely nothing at the big bang singularity, that would be a huge violation of the law of conservation of energy, which says that energy cannot be destroyed or created, only transformed. I don't know. I think it's hard to say, you know, what happens at the singularity. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there is no theory of what happens yeah. before or, you know, I mean, there is no, you know, concept, of, about there is no concept of yeah. before. I think it's too unknown to, mm -hmm. to, to actually yeah. say that the conservation of I won't say it's a violation or a violation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's going on here? You can't have everything coming from absolutely nothing for no reason at all. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. 
Here is what happened. Remember, this is a mathematical reality of mine. Spoken with such confidence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like it when people just sort of put in mathematical mm. and then there's like no maths there at all. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then just it's just to psych everybody out. Mm. Singularity was not a moment of everything just randomly springing from nothing. That's insane. What it was was mind being transformed into matter. Oh. Mind transformed <laughs> into matter. Oh. Hmm. So how? What does it have to do with singularity? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Is that like okay. a testable hypothesis? Oh, yeah. <laughs> a violation of the law of conservation of energy. Because nothing is being created or destroyed, it's being transformed. Mental energy has mathematical patterns, mathematical waveforms, is being transformed into matter. I, I find this a little bit of a disappointing theory that mm. you just go, oh, there was energy in the mind. Mm. It, and it, so it, it, everything's it's fine. It's quite dualistic yeah, I can, body. I can assure you, my mind has no energy at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like energy less. Okay. Well, that's, that's good. why we have all of reality seemingly springing from an infinitesimal point. It is reality being transformed from mind into matter. Think about when you go to sleep in a dream. <laughs> And a dream world is suddenly springing into existence from nothing, so to speak. So here we look at two of them already. Mm, well, dreams. It's, it's, I guess it's like a question of interpretation because yeah. it's springing out like off your neural activity. Yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah. I mean, it's... And that's physical. Does your neural activity have such a large energy? Yeah. I literally have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> I get lost. I think things that are just not really testable. I mean, okay, so if you view, if you say like, you know, what you're viewing is just like an image, right? Yeah. In your mind. So then it would be like no different to something like something appearing on a screen and you go, oh, here's a picture that appears on the screen. It came from nothing. There was nothing a minute ago. Now it's on the screen. So, I mean, you wouldn't really say that that's like, materializing it's not yeah. it's I not mean, it's just an image actually what, what do you mean it's not testable when you sleep you have to read, <laughs> right so maybe you can we can True. make an experiment you go yeah. to sleep we measure your energy <laughs> the next day you tell us if you had a dream or not and we yeah. check if the energy changed yeah. <laughs> to test your easy yeah okay all right <laughs> singularity and the law of conservation of energy there is no violation of the law of conservation of energy and the big bang singularity is instantly explained when you realize that this is a reality of mathematical mind and the domain of space time is transformed mind how i got lost <laughs> mind, transformed mind I think yeah. you have a mathematical mind. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, how? <laughs> I got lost. So I don't have a mathematical mind. Yeah. I only have a regular mind. Yeah, I so. think you're just being confused by the jargon. And it's yeah. just like he's throwing jargon at you and it's like blinding us. It's fogging our brains. He's just using terms. Yeah. Why does everything behave like a wave? That's because mind is a sinusoidal waveform. Mind is, is a waveform. It? Is it? <laughs> Mine is like waveform. I mean, <laughs> that's you, a pretty you, simple waveform. But but it you, carries no information. Yeah. But you know you can Fourier transform anything and like, decompose it. <laughs> so <laughs> well, is that the same wave we're talking about? Is it talking yeah. about like brainwave readings? Because even those are like yeah oh, yeah, 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 yeah electroencephalography yeah. ECG. Is yeah. this like yeah. quantum theory of the brain? Because you know there's there's, there's people that always come up with those theories and. Is yeah, this it's like putting, put, putting quantum in anything to get funding or? Uh, pretty much, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anything mysterious, you just put quantum yeah. in it and it's like, apparently solves it. Everything exhibits wave-like behavior because in truth, at its fundamental level, 
Nothing is material, it's mental. So a particle will fly. What? <laughs> what? Am, I, am I mental? <laughs> mental. Yeah. I'm mental. Everybody's mental. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. I think it's losing it a little bit, you know. I think, I think it was like it started off really good. Yeah, and then he, now he's just putting together things in a yes. random fashion. I think now yeah. he's talking to his followers to explain them why it's okay to consume Eloy. You know, <laughs> I think the logic breaks down with the star, uh, starting from the point that he talks about the singularities and the big mess, yeah. I, I guess. Well, yes. Uh, as soon as he started talking about his own theories, it started to fall, fall yeah. apart. Yeah. I think, I think it's like, you know, you can use singularity as an excuse for anything. Like, Having McDonald's fifth time this week. Oh, it's because <laughs> okay. it's because of singularity. You know? <laughs> the McDonald's is only mental. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trajectory because it is following a mental trajectory. Just like I have a trajectory if I wish to go up and get something from the shelf. A particle also has a mental trajectory. This is its internal mathematical coding, its internal programming, so to speak, that tells it how to behave. To get a better understanding of this, you can think of all of us as large particles following out our internal mental programming, our internal mental coding. This is what allows us to do anything else. I will go up and get something from my shelf because I'm following my internal mental programming, my internal mental code. The same thing is happening at all levels, at all fundamental levels of existence. Particles follow a wave trajectory because they are following their internal mental programming, which is based on the sinusoidal waveform. I thought it has something more to do with potential energies, you know, like the like the electron, for example, it occupies some molecular orbital, hmm. not because it's mental no. energy, but because of Coulomb potential and other potentials that create some kind of distribution. Yes. Um, well, yeah, I mean, everything is, is um, particle, or, you know, made of particles and everything is uh, determined by Schrodinger's equation and everything is a wave function, so you and I are wave functions. Mm. That part is all fine, yeah. But it's nothing got to do with mental. There's not no, there's no not. mental programming thing. <laughs> that that, that yeah. reminds me more like uh, the, the movie Matrix. But some yeah. people are mental. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This uh, might be uh, mental. Uh, but is, how, that, is that because asking? of their wave function? Or yeah. because of I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Mm. About quantum entanglement, where two particles can have seemingly instantaneous communication. Mm, they don't have communication. This is easily solved once you realize that this is a mathematical reality, a reality of mind, because all distance is an illusion. Think of when you're playing a game, distance <laughs> is an illusion. Game? Playing a game? Yeah. 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 Like, you know, in the game, you have some distance. Yes. But in reality, there is no distance. Like your pieces have a distance apart, but that's like representative of the game distance. Yeah. But you know, the game does occupy like real memory and yeah. takes mm -hmm. some and there's a mapping computers. between yeah. those two distances. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can travel around the entire game world. But ultimately, there isn't any real physical distance. So to have two parts of the game communicate, you don't need to have a signal travel from point A to point B. It's all happening in the background, in the coding. Same thing in a dream. Which takes oh, memory okay. and... Okay, okay. Yeah. so he's talking about computer games, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, And he's it's, saying it's, like, okay, I mean like, you know, point A, point B. Yeah. He's using it as an analogy to explain mm -hmm. the reality mm. i see i see well okay yeah um yeah so a lot of a lot of sort of uh pseudo science is creeping in but, <laughs> yes. but that's an interesting idea i think yeah yeah i mean he's sharing yeah. his personal beliefs yes which, about things which cannot be really you know proven or disproven so there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong about that i think yes it's more like he's personal like, interpretation yeah, yeah. yeah. inventions yeah. so if there's you know if you view reality entirely as simulation so mm -hmm. this is quite a 
old idea. I think mm. it's gone around. Then I, I don't know. I think a lot of what he's trying to say is based on that. Mm. Mm. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Distance is an illusion. You can travel across dream worlds, but is there really any true physical distance? No, it's all happening within your mind. A singularity, an infinitesimal point. Tell it to the logistics <laughs> industry. <laughs> this existence can communicate with each other instantaneously. He's or, talking about teleportation. <laughs> or, or is he saying that, you know, uh, sort of all truth is sort of subjective and everything is happening in your mind. So mm -hmm. it, you could either uh, see it as that, uh, you know, there's some global simulator that yeah. is simulating mm -hmm. all of our reality mm -hmm. or that somehow all the reality that is happening is within your own subjective mind. So... Wait, so does it mean that the only reality is his reality and we don't exist? We are just like avatars and uh, uh, yeah, PCs? Possibly, yeah. So like he's the only real mind. We are just like... Yeah. <laughs> Why is he making yeah. this video? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or it could be you. Yeah. yeah. Me? Yeah. Yes. Wow, that would be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's like uh, yeah. old time. Old time. Uh, Wait. Why did, I, why did I respect people for my whole life? <laughs> kind of like a Twilight Zone sort of episode. Mm. Because this is a non-local reality, meaning distance is an illusion. Because this is yeah. a sheer dream based on a mathematical code. Everything can happen behind the scenes in the coding level. Now, why is it that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light? Well, think about how incredibly strange. Mm. Yeah, so th that's the yeah. uh, contradiction yeah. to this theory, yeah. isn't okay. it? Yeah. 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 All right, so let's see how it comes out. It is. Light is unextended and massless. It doesn't take up any space. It doesn't have any height, length, width, or depth. Light also does not experience space or time. Light is a very special particle known as a boson. This means that light doesn't take up any space. You can effectively have a myriad of photons all occupying the same point. Now think about all these strange particles that's unextended. So yeah, light is a boson. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 for sure. Stuck them yeah. 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 yeah, they can all occupy the same state. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't mean it's like has no size. Actually, yeah. though. Um, it's the same as any uh, wave function where, you know, it can occupy um, some given volume, essentially, and uh, has a particular wave function that uh, is, is uh, determined by whatever conditions it's in. So. Mm -hmm. And it is massless. It doesn't take up length, width, or height. You can fit a myriad of photons all in a single point. What else has these properties? My thought, your mind, your thoughts don't take up any space either. Your mind is I mean, a boson. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's connected to your brain, whether or not it's like mm. entirely reducible to the brain, I guess is up for debate. But like, it's clearly occupies, has some physical connection to a, to a volume. Mm. Don't have any height, length, or depth. You can't measure them with a ruler. The same thing with light. That's because light is mind. Remember. <gasps> wow. Wow. Oh, wow. 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 <laughs> Think that picture yeah. really proves everything. Yeah. It is mind. And the purest form of mind is light. Light and mind is the foundation of existence. Light, mind, is frequency, mathematical pattern. How do we have, uh, did we run away from the speed of light issue? Did we uh, run back to it? Okay, okay, light okay, is fine. mind, but why does that mean it's got a So, bit so let's speed? recap the argument. So he, he, and then he, go, he went on about how light doesn't take up any space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm because it's a boson mm -hmm. and bosons can all be on top of each other. Mm -hmm. It has no space. Mm -hmm. And your mind will have space, so your mind is light. And your mind has <laughs> no space. That's why. 
the speed of light. It's just real <laughs> like your mind can, can be measured, then your yeah. mind is like, the light is mine. Yeah. It's so just that like your mind jumping can't move faster than the speed of light. Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in this movie, K Pax, Kevin Spacey was traveling on a beam of light. Mm. I have a beam of light to catch. Mm. Is transformed light. Is transformed thought. Is transformed light. Philosopher Dr. Thomas Stark said the singularity that precedes the Big Bang. Thomas Stark. Thomas Stark. Is, is Thomas, Thomas Stark somebody that we should know? One of the Avengers. <laughs> Tony Stark's little brother. <laughs> John, da John Downing told me that nobody uses the word ontologically. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> ontologically. <laughs> but they do that in yeah. ontological, like, uh, yeah. well, uh, yeah, people, even in quantum. Yeah, people yeah. use it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a famous paper by uh, Terry Rudolph that they coined this uh, uh, psi ontologically, mm -hmm. psi, psi ontological. Um, Scientology. Yeah, exactly. Yes, it's, it's a pun. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Light ontologically is what unextended mathematics actually is. The Big Bang is a light event, a mental event. In particular. So I looked up Dr. Thomas Stark. Okay, Thomas Stark. Found, who is this guy? I found many other real. Dr. Thomas Starks, who were MDs, who were advertising various firms. Mm. And I found I was linked to the Wikipedia page for mathematicism. And in the notes, in the references, is Mork's Ontological Mathematics, the Science of the Future, mm. published well, in 2019. Published when? Last year. Last year. Last year. Mm. Uh. But somewhere in here is also mentions. Thomas Stark's Neo-Pythagorean, Neo-Platonist, Leibnizian mathematical reality theory. Does he have a new Pythagoras' rule? <laughs> 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 and he doesn't seem too famous. Doesn't seem too famous, not mainstream, definitely. Yeah. Well, the breaking of the perfect symmetry of light. Matter is broken light. Asymmetric light. Recalcitrant, sluggish thought. What was that word? Recalcitrant. Slow, sluggish thought. Frozen light. Physicist David Bohm said oh. the universe consists of frozen light, and this ocean of energy could be thought of as an ocean of light. What all this shows the properties of light, the singularity, the law of conservation of energy, quantum. So Bohm, Bohm, David Bohm is he's the alternative quantum theory guy, right? Bohmian mechanics. I don't know. Yeah, Bohmian yeah. mechanics. Yeah. Um, okay, but I don't know why he's talking about frozen light. Yeah. Isn't is yeah. it the same quantum mechanics, just different uh, formalism? Yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Tangled. This shows that everything is connected. All is mind and all is eternal. This means I feel like the speed of light thing has just gotten lost by the way. So yeah, I think it's yeah. gotten lost, yeah. Really at rest. And now he's saying everything's eternal as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure where that came I from. I mean, if I was eternal, I wouldn't care about having maximum speed, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call eternity. <laughs> These physical bodies may perish, but they're simply avatars, and energy is only... <laughs> that looks like this meme guy. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, what? You, you have Cosmic the... Yeah, yeah, the, 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 yeah, yeah, the slowly yeah, yeah. enlightening yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and mind is the fundamental, eternal substance of existence that can never be destroyed. You, as an avatar, may crumble. But you, as a mind, will exist and have existed for eternity. And you are on a spiraling trajectory of evolution towards evolving into God. Uh, I'm not sure I agree. I, I, I yeah. have seen a few destroyed minds before. <laughs> yes. It's like transhumanism, right? Yeah. I, I, I 
unfortunately, I have many people that say this kind of thing. I know people. Mm. Yeah. Somehow everybody ends up at this point where they think that they're God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. There's, there's plenty yeah. of things that could get in the way of evolution. Like there's no yeah. real, like yeah, we also, could be hit by an asteroid, and that's and, you know, and that's you as know, far as we're going to get. Also, it's pretty common misconception that people think that evolution leads somewhere, but evolution doesn't really have any mm. goal. It's just adapting to environment. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. We could evolve to be yeah. dumber. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now beautifully, this all fits together. Existence is not what you. I don't think anything fit together, actually, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah. But it sure sounded beautiful. <laughs> think it is. And when you try to force existence into the paradigm of materialism by saying that everything is physical and that's it, you get all of these paradoxes and inconsistencies and errors. But once you accept that this is a mental reality, a mathematical reality, a shared dream that we all inhabit together, it all fits together perfectly. Well, How? You, I think if you just sort of say that yeah, there's no problems, there's nothing. Yeah. yeah, so the same argument could be used to prove literally any religion. Right. Mm. Yeah. Like, if or, you, or like, like pretty much any claim that you can't yeah, yeah. mention that's not physical. Yeah. Yeah. This video, the, the uh, this part is more like a religious idea. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but even the like internal structure of it's not consistent. You know, because you could have some sort of claim about purpose or something that's not like physical, but you could sort of expect it at least to be sort of self consistent. Mm. Mm. But there were. It's like additional ways in which it's wrong, you know. The speed of light, quantum entanglement, all of it shows that this is a reality of mind, of mathematical mind, of waveforms, of frequencies, of sinusoids, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> sine, sine waves, wow. I love those so, sine waves. So complicated, yeah. yeah. Dream that we all exist in together. It's time to wake up. It's time to remember. We have so much to do. It's time to get on it. This is just the beginning. Now, once you have understood this, a question that might come to you is are we all one mind or are we individual minds? That's an incredibly important question, so make sure that you watch this video here. Oh. 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 Final thoughts, anyone? Um, I thought, uh, you know, I I appreciated that uh, the first part uh, the actually uh, was almost flawless. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think he's obviously studied this stuff and to a reasonably sort of, uh, you know, comprehensive level. So yeah, the, the passion is good. The passion is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just, just putting these things together mm. and then like possibly so, like misleading people by psyching them out with maths. I, I don't know. I think that's not very good. Yeah. I see mm. nothing mathematics in this video, but she's, uh, he's actually talking about mathematical thoughts every time. He's, yeah. He's just using the term. He's just using the word. Yeah, yeah. he's just yeah. He's just using the word. It, it did lack some formality. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Mark, can you please make <laughs> yeah, yeah. it more formal this time? For the former part, I mean the hey, explanation for the first five. Yeah. Okay, glitches. Can you can you derive the speed of light from mind? I didn't catch that part. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's left as an exercise to think about. Oh, oh always. <laughs> okay, all right. So we'll wrap up there. So um thanks for watching. Bye. 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 Like and subscribe. <laughs>